So as I said, the averaging makes this measurement go slower by byproduct, but the main point of averaging is to uh, 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 make the sample more repeatable. Make, make the measure more repeatable by taking more measurements and averaging. The other thing that we see out here was, uh, if you go to ban bandwidth, well bandwidth, what it does is it takes, it says it takes more time to make each measurement, which is sort of what we're trying to get to in the end, but we also would like to have an averaging factor anyway. So depending on how fast you want it to go, so if, you, if you look at this marker, see how it go? This is how fast the measurement is being taken. Now it's going slower. Now if you put it on four, it's going really, it's going much even slower. Do you see that little cursor moving around? see that cursor? I'm, by changing the bandwidth, it changes how fast that cursor is moving, which is basically saying how fast the measurement is being taken. It matters more for this hard sample than it does for this sort of softer one. So at this point again, now that we have all, the, all these accuracy uh, accuracy uh, things in, you know, to stop the transient response to get more accurate data, at this time we use a computer to get the data. Do you know how to do that? There's a, when you, when you log into the computer, there's this file. This is a read-only file, so you can't delete it. So you, you, you would double-click that, and you're going to end up with something like this. Then you, what you would do is you write your name of your sample in here. You click Get Data. Uh, change the name of this, 6. You click Click Data. This is going to pop up as a new data sheet right here. All your impedance data and all of your... Uh, phase data is going to be logged in. So all your impedance data, phase data for this. So this is a very nice picture of resonance and that. Yeah. All right. So now we'll go to the anti-resonance point. Uh, the anti-resonance point, let's say, is around 67. So we start at 67 kilohertz. And let's see if we can even get it. Uh, I don't know what it's stopping. Where is because it stopping? the stop point is also 67, I see. So this is another interesting point. If you really want a really accurate like result, let's say you're measuring, you want to measure one kilohertz because uh, you want to get the dielectric permittivity. You don't want any frequencies, you know, response sort of. But uh, what you can do is you type in start six, start one kilohertz, stop one kilohertz. Therefore, and if you want to, you can take the average, but it's not doing any, it's not doing any sweep. So in addition, you I mean. So, so that that's also a way to stabilize the data and not to get all this noisy stuff. So, okay, it's okay. It stopped at that point. So let's stop at 70. I think I went too far, actually. Oh, maybe not. So we want to do scale. No measure that format calibration display auto scale scale reference auto scale. So there. See if you'll notice this little dip right here. Yeah. This is some imperfection. This is an imperfection in, in the in the sample. It's probably due to some the way I soldered it, the way I'm holding it. Uh, this probably big big chunk thing, chunky thing right there is uh, probably messing the things up because it should be sort of looking sort of perfect. So as you can see, if I sort of mess with it in the middle, it's gonna make some noise. I can shift the resonance frequency lower by by pressing on it. Uh, but anyways, right now our concern is to get that 3 dB point. So this is about 10 kilohertz maximum. It can you will see samples go from 10 kilohertz or 100. I mean 10 kilo ohms to 100 kilo ohms or even uh, a gig, maybe a mega ohm for a single crystal sample or a high coupling factor sample. And then again, the coupling factor can it can co comes from both the geometry of the vibration and both the material properties. So this actually is, uh, 10 kilohertz. So to be 10 kilohertz, you divide that by uh, square root of two, so you can say it's about one over one over 1.5 is two over three, so it's two thirds of the value. So we look around six or something. Let's say five is good. So this is a uh, 68, 68.8 kilohertz, and the other way we don't quite get there. 68.8, and this is 69. So let's just go to 71. So let's start from 60. Let's start, start from 68 kilo oh, megahertz. This is going to be a problem. Uh, 668 kilohertz and stop at 71 kilohertz. And we'll try to get closer now. And 
then we'll use this marker to get in closer. 69, 69.4. Uh, we can do, try to do span. Span 1 kilohertz. Center 69.5 kilohertz. Now it's doing it a different way. The center point will be the it's, and Now we're defining a center point and a, and a width. So let's let's re let's re um, and remember when we're done you gotta log out. Where's that dis where's that uh where's that auto scale scale reference here it is. That's not what I'm trying to do here. Um, so here, uh, this is about twelve actually. So look look, see that now that we zoomed in the maximum impedance increased. Why, why it increases because it's taking more points and the measurement's going slower and it has a better definition. So this is why it's important to zoom, to get into your data instead of just taking a large spectrum. When you take a large spectrum, you're going to be missing points and you're going to be getting lower values. The resonance is going to be a higher impedance and the enter resonance, you're going to measure as lower impedance, although it's not actually true. So you have to go, you have to get in close, you have to put in averaging and you have to put in the higher bandwidth. In this case, we're using the bandwidth level yeah. 4. Uh, so as I go here, marker, here we're 12 kilohertz, sorry, 12 kilo ohms, and here we're 6, and here we're, on the other side, we're about 6, 2. So at this time, you would again take your data, and you would probably want to call it, like, anti-resonance, you know, so you can tell what, what the heck it is later. Okay. A and T. There, we got anti-resonance. Uh, just for fun, what we also like to do is uh, I'm going to start it back at 65 kilohertz so I can see the whole thing, and I want to go back and rescale it. Calibration, measurement, scale. Okay, rescale. It's nice to take a whole picture. Uh, this is not. This is not a, looking nice, but this is what it is. I think maybe if you go slower, let's see. What is it, bandwidth averaging? Uh, yeah, see, now it's going slow. Hopefully, some of those bumps will not go either. They're still there. <laughs> what are you going to do? They're, usually, we don't get those bumps if you clamp it properly in the very center. It probably has to do with something uh, like that. So, you want to take, take one of these? Take one of these and call it, uh, you know, whole, maybe whole spectrum. Now you have the anti resonance frequency, you have the resonance frequency, you have the and remember this is like this is not looking so sharp because you need to put in log scale. But you don't have to do it right now. Uh, so and then what else do you need? And you need the off resonance frequency. So the easy way I mentioned it can be start one kilohertz, stop one kilohertz. And you might well auto scale. Display? Where's auto scale? Okay, you know. <laughs> I forgot. We can auto scale A and B. I don't know. It's just taking a while, but it doesn't make a difference to me. Let's take the marker and let's go back here. Now we can tell. Okay, so the so so the off resonance. So once it completes, we can just take the data. See what what the the phase is. Remember from the phase. You can get the uh, tangent delta prime. You know that now. <laughs> why is it tangent? Delta, why is it tangent delta prime instead of the other one? She can explain to you what what that's all about. Uh, and then uh, you can measure the impedance there at the top. Uh, that's impedance. At this point, you don't have to take the data. You can just write it down. But it's it's good to take it. You have more data. And see, at this point, you would be done because you have all the information needed to characterize the sample. But let's just do something. Let's start from 10 kilohertz and let's go to 500 kilohertz because I want to show you something. 
we mentioned there's resonance going on like this, resonance going on like that, resonance going on to the thickness. Depending on the frequency and the geometry, there's different resonance. So I don't I think we can check it off this uh, but when you're just playing with it, when you're just trying to get into the right frequency zone, you don't need to do this averaging, or you don't need to do a... You can turn off averaging, maybe bandwidth, you can tell this put on 2 or something. And then we can auto-scale everything, and B, auto-scale. Where is it stopping? Start. Five, oh, stop. So start. 10 kilohertz. Stop. 500 kilohertz. And now let's auto-scale. It's not auto scaling. There we go. Now, do you see what's going on here? This is that first resonance frequency. Oh, this one. Second. This one is the first one. What we do, we design the sample in such a way where we lower the frequency of the resonance frequency that we want to target and measure, so it doesn't interact with other ones. For example, these two, these two little bumps are close together. They're going to mess each other up. And as you get even farther up you'll get more interaction. Uh, so basically this is very what we call a clean response. It's not it's not close to any other resonance modes. So we can measure it with we can we can definitely characterize the material properties from that without worrying about any uh, air due to that reason. This is the other this is a second this is a third resonance mode. This, we call this a second resonance mode but it's actually the third mechanical mode. The second mechanical mode doesn't appear for reasons you can read in the long range here. I think I described it in some detail. Uh, why you here? <laughs> I think it, it would actually be wrong. On, this is actually it, but it's not. Uh, but you don't measure it. Sometimes mistaking, mistaking. We call it the, the third resonance mode, but it's sort of the second and the third. You can call it what you want. Call it, call it the second resonance mode, and people will understand what you're talking about. Otherwise, you have to explain yourself too much. Uh, then, so this is it. We typically don't characterize a second resonance mode for this type of sample, but for the KP sample, as I mentioned in the slides, you'll have to characterize a second resonance mode frequency. You don't need the impedance or anything like that. So, and this is probably like, if you go farther up, you might find this is a thickness or something. You can calculate probably one millimeter. What's the resonance frequency of one millimeter? You can, if it has one millimeter length, what's the, what's the resonance frequency? Like megahertz or 500 kilohertz or something? It's gonna be up here. And then let's say if we stop at one megahertz, and then we can auto scale. See now you're getting this is probably the thickness. This is probably the thickness right here. And then let's see it's not really nice, as you can see. So um, usually we try to change the sample dimensions and to make it look more clean and nice without it being interacting with other resonance modes. So I, I was just showing you what what the, what the real sample looks like, what the real ingredients. You may just you're just.